What we're seeing this week is the first time that Amazon, Meta, Microsoft, even Snap, all these companies came out and talked about how they're just investing tons and tons of money into AI, into AI infrastructure. Meta is spending, they said, up to $40 billion in total capital expenditures, a majority of which will be infrastructure related to AI. Microsoft is going to spend $56 billion next year. Google's projected to spend $48 billion. And $48 billion for Google is actually 17% of total sales. So these are not small numbers and investments for them. But then on the other side, they're starting to get questions. It's the first time in earnings calls, rather than asking, are you investing? Uh, like a UBS analyst was asking the Google Google's CEO Sundar, you know, when is it going to help revenue generation and create greater value over time versus just cutting costs? A Morgan Stanley analyst in the Microsoft earnings call was saying there's an industry debate raging around these ex capital expenditure requirements, but what, will the monetization actually match that? And we have talked about this a lot. We talked about at the micro level, when it comes to renewals after that first year, you're a big corporate and you signed up for Azure AI or Gemini's and Google Cloud's AI services, are you actually going to see value enough to keep investing in it? And from the big tech companies, they're spending so much money but even the Microsoft CFO said this, the value could be realized over the next 15 years and beyond. You never hear public company CFOs talking about massive capital expenditures and giving a 15 year time frame to public market investors. So I think this is the Goldman Sachs report kicked it off. Everyone's going to start questioning these expenditures and the big tech companies they basically this week said, we don't care, we're doing it. So how this plays out, I mean, we're certainly seeing the market's reaction. Right. But a lot of the big tech stocks are, are doing okay. And I think it's worth, I mean, except for Amazon, we can talk about Amazon, we can talk about Intel. But I think it's worth noting that like, this is not, this slowdown that we're seeing in the market is not driven by AI spending. This is driven by broader economic, macroeconomic factors. Does AI spending help it? Not really. But I don't think this is causing the real issues. And case in point, I mean, Meta, you know, these companies that we talk about, Meta basically went out there, delivered great earnings results. They've grown revenue 20% over the last four quarters, which is insane given how much money that they're making. And the stock didn't drop when they said it, when they raised, the it was the bottom of their guidance, right? Where they said they're going to they're gonna raise the amount that they're going to intend to spend, Um Microsoft, similar thing. Microsoft actually missed its cloud number, but then uh, it bounced back the next day when uh, people read the report and Satya Nadella said it's a capacity issue for them to sell, not a demand issue, right? They just didn't have enough hardware. Um, Alphabet, I think, beat expectations, did the first $10 billion quarter in uh, Google Cloud history, although Google... Uh, did miss on YouTube revenue, but I don't think there's anything to do with AI. I'm trying to think. And then meanwhile, NVIDIA just went up because it saw all these numbers uh, hitting. So I would challenge your your perception here that well, this okay, is so, the end of the AI bubble. So this week, the market reaction is not just from AI spending. I'll give you that. I think it, AI, it's not that the entire market is in a sea of red because these big tech companies are spending tens of billions of dollars on AI infrastructure. But I do think the narrative that's held up the market during any downturn over the last year, year and a half is there's go this, this wave of AI innovation is going to just lead to incredible cost savings for companies. So increasing profit margins, incredible new avenues of growth. The world is gonna change. That narrative has been so strong that in any kind of potentially the uh, you know problematic moment that held the market up and the big obviously the big seven were driving this and i mean they have been a significant s segment of the overall market growth anyways so now that they are getting questioned and now people are starting to worry again 
do we trust them to almost think of that? I'd seen one comment around how someone said, you never hear 15 year market uh, timeframes from public markets. That's asking us to be a venture investor. And I'm not a venture investor. I'm a public markets investor. Like the, the companies are asking us to trust them around this spending and the fact that they're finally getting questioned. And as we've discussed over and over again, there probably will be some very short term issues around customer satisfaction and customers like actually realizing value enough to keep investing themselves in generative AI efforts, even though I'm long term positive and optimistic about it. So I think it's not it's not necessarily today and yesterday that the AI, AI investment is causing the sell off. But I think over the next couple of weeks and months, it's going to be a problem. And it, this has been what's held up the market so far, and it's, it's going away. Let me just make the counterpoint to that. Isn't it a miracle then that if this is such an issue for investors, that these big tech companies aren't selling off more than the rest of the market is? I mean, in well, some cases they are, but I don't think it's due to AI. If you think about Amazon, for instance, Amazon selling off more than the market. I think they missed their their whisper number in terms of the number that people really expect them to do, but they still grew at 19% Amazon web services. They turned in record profits. And then you think about the others like meta, right? We talked about meta spending. Uh, they're down, you know, a percentage and change today while the S and P 500 is down 2% Google, right? People so upset about Google spending. If that was what's going to drive them down. I mean, I know it's hard to take a single day, but Google's only down, you know, two, two percent and change. Uh, while the S&P is down two, and then Apple is up today. Okay, so we have to remember that Google had $24 billion of profit off $85 billion of revenue. Microsoft had $22 billion in profit off $65 billion. Like, these numbers are still insane yeah. in terms of how profitable these companies are. So, yeah, I, I agree on a relative basis. That's a problem, but that's what these numbers were good. The reason Meta, and it's still, I think it's only up about 4% since the earnings blow, and it was a blowout. It was like they they crushed it. I mean, Mark Zuckerberg wearing two chains. I still, <laughs> I, that, for anyone who got uh, Mark Zuckerberg, they sent out this uh, thing around their ability to understand objects within video, and in the demo, he's where he wears a second gold chain that I think he actually got from T-Pain, if I remember correctly that would that all, would track yeah which is all ridiculous <laughs> but that would that was the sign that we all should have bought meta before their earnings because no ceo would ever do that unless they knew they were going to crush earnings but right. like again these companies are still firing on all cylinders at the moment and they're not up and that's why like and it's meta's up small relative to after hours it jumped like 11 percent or 12 percent but people are having to question it because the, I think this it's going to play out over months right now, but I, I'm still standing that that Goldman report was the turning point. And I think the entire conversation around generative AI has changed. And it's and in, a, in a good way, things are going to be questioned a little bit more. I think it would be good if there was more common sense around AI. I just don't know if it's happening. Let me explain. Let me give you one more example. NVIDIA, right? Like they've benefited greatly from what's happening this week. There's a Wall Street Journal story out about NVIDIA. Big Tech's AI race has one main winner, NVIDIA, and says it's NVIDIA's market. Everyone else just lives in it, though not nearly as well. The superstar chip maker hasn't participated in the latest round of earnings reports, uh, but the most dominant news of those reports is great news for NVIDIA as Amazon, Google, Microsoft, and Meta have all reported significant jumps in capital spending, and it's mostly going towards data centers and NVIDIA's AI systems. And NVIDIA has had a bit of a pullback of late, but it's still a $2.75, $2.79 trillion company with room to run. I mean, it's cheap compared to its earnings. So, you know, I, I mean, think it, if we're going to think about like the bubble stock, it's NVIDIA. Yeah, but that that's where what's so fascinating about this moment is... Uh, and, and even in that Goldman report that just trash generative AI, it like, and honestly, I thought it was, I thought it was good that it came out, but I actually thought that they seem to be missing some very, very clear benefits that everyone has already able to like show. But the funniest part was at the end of the report, 
they're saying, oh, but you should still buy AI infrastructure companies because even though we're saying this technology is not going to work out, everyone's still going to invest in it. So <laughs> you might as well yeah. buy these companies. And, and it actually makes sense because, again, all the big tech companies are saying we're going to still be investing massively in this. So, I th yeah, uh, NVIDIA is still the poster child for this. If NVIDIA ever starts to have problems, then we know things are changing. Right. What happened to Intel? Have you been following this? Their earnings came out yesterday. I was at the stock exchange uh, for CNBC closing bell. And then, of course, it went into closing bell overtime. Once all these reports came in, we just saw Intel hit. And we were just like, holy crap. You know, it was down 26% today. It's laying off 15,000 people. It's going to pull back its dividend. This is a disaster for Intel. Have you been watching this at all? I mean, I saw the I saw the price action, and I saw the the especially the layoff announcement was interesting because it's been a while since we've heard about mass layoffs at any of the in yeah. tech in general, and this was the first time in a while I heard I even saw an announcement like that. But I think overall, it's just in a company like Intel should have been a leader in this entire wave of AI investment in infrastructure. They haven't been. And I think it's it's one of those things that it, it stuff is moving so fast that if you are not, and which, which is Mark Zuckerberg's argument that he made in the earnings call around why they're investing so much is that if you don't invest now or you don't get it right, you will be left so far behind a few years from now that you know, like uh, these tech companies will become shells of their former selves. And I think Intel has not shown any clear direction of who it's going to be in this overall landscape. Whereas NVIDIA and everyone, obviously, everyone knows, or even the, like the global foundries of the world or, or you know, all these other companies that are infrastructure players, the Intel, no one knows who they're going to be. And the market right. reacted accordingly. Yeah. So I'll, I'll give my Intel take here, which is quite similar to yours. I mean, we had Pat Gelsinger on the show and he was pretty impressive. But I think for Intel, the problem is that they're just, and it might be cliche to say it, but they are stuck behind NVIDIA. That's where all the money is going in semis right now is into GPUs. And NVIDIA just has this advantage between the actual chips themselves, the software that's being used to train, and the networking between the servers, which is actually a key part of their advantage that nobody talks about. And it's just very difficult to dislodge them that way. So Intel's really been able to uh, unable to compete with them on AI chips. And then you could say, all right, they have these accelerators that you could use and maybe you could train that way. But this is the other problem for Intel. Where they would come and substitute, where people are looking for, let's say, cheaper cost or you know, some purpose-built technology, the big tech companies are building that themselves. You know, Google has a chip um, and, and all the others have their own chips uh, that they're building. Like Microsoft is building its own silicon. And then you're trying to come up against these companies and there's just no room to sell. I think that's a fair read and of foundries it. foundries take a long time to build. <laughs> they're trying to do that yeah. too. And it's just going to be forever. Yeah, I think, I think that's a fair read that now their competition isn't just infrastructure. It's the tech companies themselves. And I mean, getting lost in those multiple battle, fronts of battle is a, is a scary place to be. Absolutely. All right. So let's, uh, as we wrap up this segment, like it's, we go deep and now let's take a step back. Where do you think the economy is going from here? Uh, because we talk for a long time about whether there's going to be a soft landing. And for a long time, it seemed like there would be or even a no landing. And maybe this is just the wheels touching down, right? Inflation is still low. The market, the S&P 500 is still up 12% this year. Every, you know, there's, there's, actual innovation and energy in the economy. So where do you think the next few months take us? Okay, I, I don't want to be Jim Cramering here and uh, jinxing everything, but I'm going to say, I think this is going to be just a healthy short-term correction. I mm -hmm. think it's been a while. The VIX wasn't above 20 in a couple of years. I think there was a, this is the largest sell-off since October 2022. I think there's a need for a bit of a correction. I think it will be okay. I think the underlying story, we've known the consumer is slowing down. We've no, If the Fed cuts and reacts accordingly, which all signals are pointing to, I think things will stabilize and maybe soft landing, maybe kind of like just a short-term breather overall. But 
Uh, I mean, obviously, trying to predict anything, given the just how complex the world is right now, is a difficult one, over, especially over the next few months.